Hey there, it's Sarah here, and this is Brown Family Goods. I'm out here in my little chicken barn right now, and I wanted to just share with you what I'm going to be working on today. It's a Sunday. This is usually my day to kind of fiddle around outside. So today what I have to do is scoop out the litter off of the chicken coop floors. This is one of those projects that's about twice a year. Spring, after a long winter, there's plenty of chicken bedding on the floor. And then right now, after a long summer, it's the same thing. So, um, it, so it ends up being probably around six inches or so of bedding and chicken manure and things that need to be scooped out of the coops so that there is a fresh start for whatever season is ahead. We tend to use the deep litter method for the chicken coops, as in we don't clean that stuff out every single day. It just would be totally unmanageable for us. And the deep litter, it kind of composts in place for quite a while. So you have the pine shavings that come out of the coop boxes, and then you have the chicken manure, of course, and dirt from the actual dirt floor. So it all kind of composts together over time and breaks down. And then, like I said, about every six months, we scoop it all out and then throw it on the compost pile. Today, I'm actually starting a new compost pile because the one in the garden, I have had a compost system with three boxes in the garden. It's just broken down over the last several years, the wood that was sort of the framework for that. And I'm gonna be doing away with that. This one is gonna be bigger and more productive, basically. So this is gonna be a little bit easier system for me to take the chicken bedding from the coops to this new spot that I'm establishing because it's sort of in the chicken run area. It's just a nice area. It's sectioned off from the actual chickens so that they can't just totally kick and spread all of this. It will actually stay in a pile and then I can turn it periodically. Now, typically, Alan would be helping me with this, but he had work projects going on this weekend, so he's having to go back and forth between that. Um, but I wanted to continue on with this project because it's supposed to rain tomorrow. And while the chicken coops stay dry, sometimes the floor will get a little bit more damp when it does rain, if it does rain, it hasn't rained in forever. But just the thread of that alone, I do not wanna be scooping wet litter. I would rather be scooping dry litter. So it'll be much faster and easier if I go ahead and take care of this today. Okay, so what we have here for our chicken area is two coops. We have this coop here and that coop back there. So we first began with this coop and then we just continued to grow our numbers like you do when you have chickens. And so we ended up making another coop back there. So they're basically like two little chicken shanties. Now, the only time that the chickens are actually in either of those really is overnight. And that's where the roost bars are. Okay, I wanna show you the area I'm gonna be taking all this to. So I'm starting down here, give you a little reference. Here's the coops. This is the gate that we let everybody into the full backyard. Now everybody has this entire chicken run area, but we still let them out midday or so, so that they can get into the entire backyard, get on the fresh grass and stuff like that. Again, that's something that we're gonna be changing here in a little while, which direction that they actually go out into the yard. And instead of coming into our backyard up this way towards our house and garden and all of that, we're gonna be changing some fencing around and letting them out into the big, what we call the back 40 back there. <laughs> That's just what we call it. So instead of coming towards the house where the grass is essentially decimated from both the chickens and the drought, we're gonna be going out way out back that way so that they can go onto the better grass and have some better grazing. So we'll have to do some new fencing back that direction. I don't know if you can tell, but this is a chain link fence that's right here on the back side of that goose enclosure there where we had worked on that uh, other video. So we will have to take down some of this chain link fencing here and then make new fencing to go out into the beyond uh, further out area there so that they can have some fresh grass to graze on and stay out of the backyard for a little while probably for a couple of years because we have got to work on this grass here 
because a couple of things for this summer. We're in record drought here in Louisiana, so keeping our grass alive is not that much of a priority to us. You know, we don't want to waste water by continuing to water every day, but we do want the grass to come back. <laughs> don't, don't get it twisted. We do want the grass to come back. So we've had two things, the drought. Of course we have chickens, which are content. This duck, that duck is after that rooster there. The drought is a problem and it has killed a lot of the grass. But not only that, we have had what are called sod webworms this year in this area and they have eaten so much of the grass too now you would think that the chickens would help with that but the problem is that the worms come out at night to eat the grass and the chickens are not out at night so the worms are buried all day long in the ground and then they they come up at night to eat um, so it is a problem it is a problem look at this it's just decimated at this point now this will come back i have i think i hope and um, but we have to take some of the pressure off of it with the birds because what they do is they scratch they make dust baths they scratch for worms and things like that so they just don't allow fresh new growth to live quite frankly as soon as it comes up out of the ground and it's fresh and tender that's when they eat it so it is very hard to get new growth on this dusty barren area at this point okay so we're down here towards the end of the chicken root chicken run and clark is going to stand there and model for you but this is the stall that i'm going to be putting the compost into and making a compost pile in so it's empty at the moment but you can see we already have some poultry netting around this this is just kind of a little square area that we had made for like i said new mamas and things like that we don't need this anymore so we're going to make this into the compost area and i think it's going to be a nice size area it's pretty big it's probably eight by eight or eight by 10, something like that. So it'll be a great size area to make a compost pile and make a lot of fresh new compost for us. So I think it'll be good. All right, turkeys, I'm coming to get my wheelbarrow. These are the turkey boys. This one is Jake. This one is Jordan. And this one is Tom. Pretty turkeys. And they're very sweet too. Not always sweet to each other, but they're always nice to us. dig my pile you better not dig that pile I wanted to show you the consistency of what I'm scooping out here so you can see some of this like on the top here is very fine already and really really broken down 
that's the stuff that's been sort of towards the bottom, towards the ground. The chickens mix this all by themselves. They're in there every day, scr scratching around and making holes to lay in and all kinds of stuff. But you can see down here, this stuff is more coarse. So this is what has been more towards the top. Still big pieces of the pine shavings and big feathers, things that are not broken down yet. But you can see how this would be so nutritious as a compost because it does have all the components. And even like this white bits here, this is pieces of oyster shell, calcium essentially, that the chickens eat either in their feed or they are supplemented oyster shell as well. So all of that goes through too. So if you can allow it plenty of time to break down, it turns into some really good stuff. Okay, I'm about to start in this second coop here. And I have to show you this because this is so crazy. You never know with chickens, they are nuts sometimes. And here, this is a hanging feeder, um, which just not in use right this second. But I'll show you what's in here. Somebody got inside this and laid an egg. Yeah. All the way down in there. <laughs> Crazy. Now there is a really nice thing with this one. And that is I can push this in this doorway. It's wide enough for me to go through. So I will do that. I'm going to push it on in here and... You're going to see a lot of chickens come out, I think, because there's a lot in here. Oh my gosh. Okay, girls, come on. Y'all can go out of here. Come on. Go on. It's okay. Go on. You can all go this way. Go out, please. Go. Go on, Marlene. Go on. You're not going to want to stay in here. You're going to be scared. Go on. <laughs> There's probably 40 chickens in here. <laughs> Golly. There's still some. They'll come out. All right, now we've got coop number two done. This coop is a little more orderly in general. It's got a nice big roost bar there. Three tiers, you can see. It's just easier to clean. We intend to do the other coop in the same way, to put a nice big roost bar in there, and we will at some point. It's just a matter of time. This is nest boxes here, and then some of the, there's a couple of ducks that sleep in here. They usually sleep on the ground there underneath that. And then more roost bars that go around as well. So there's lots of chickens in here at night, but it is looking a lot better. I did the same thing on the, on the floor for this too. I put down that barn lime that just helps with um, any smells or anything, which really, it doesn't smell. If you do the deep litter method, it really doesn't smell because as I said, things compost in place but the manure that falls to the floor and then the chickens stir it up throughout the day, it doesn't smell. It basically compost down into dirt in a matter of days. So that's because there's all kinds of microorganisms and everything down there to help it break down. So that's a good thing. And that's why you can do a deep litter method. made it. I got both coops done. I'm, uh, I'm dabbing my sweat and I want to show you why this is a, this is a dirty job because as I wipe myself down, yeah, that would be chicken dust. So yeah, this is a, you do this job and then you go in and take a shower job. Um, <laughs> because it is not very clean work, which I don't mind dirty work. I really don't. I like, I kind of like jobs like this because they're just repetitive and mindless and you can just like, like I have my headphones on here, but I like to listen to a podcast and just kind of zone out and just scoop and scoop and scoop and haul away. And then, you know, you look up and it's been a couple hours later and you're done. So that's good too. 
here's something I've learned in my time as a um, gardener, homesteader, wife, just a person who has gotten older, you know, over time, like everyone. Um, things take time. They just take time and the time is going to pass either way. So like this compost, why not save this, pile it up, compost it, and just have it for actual compost over time. I'm petting Zeus now. But it's going to, the time is going to pass either way. So why not let the time pass and make some compost at the same time, you know? It's kind of like putting in the work for the meals, um, the freezer meals and stuff. It's a little bit of insurance for later. So I know that if I put that stuff in a pile right now, six months and a year from now, it'll be broken down and I'll be able to put it on my garden. And that's basically money left in the bank. You know what I mean? I don't have to buy it then. I don't have to go out and haul it and bring it home. I can just take it right there from that spot, put it onto my garden and it will be very good nutrient rich compost at that point. So the only other thing that I'm going to do now is wet that pile down a little bit just because it's really dusty and I want it to just kind of settle in there. I am no expert on composting. I just know if you pile stuff up long enough, it will break down and it will turn into dirt so that you can use. I'm about done back here for the day, done in the garden and done with the chicken coops too. But before I go up, I am gonna feed the chickens once more. Not once more, for the afternoon. I'll feed them and I will um, gather up the eggs one more time. That's what I was trying to say. So let's go in here and gather these eggs up. Hey girls, look at all these chickens. Everybody's in here chilling, digging around in this fresh new dirt here below them. And here's Fussy Lady. That's what I call her because she's going to fuss at us. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You have some eggs? Let's see. Ooh, she's got eggs. Hello. Fussy Lady. Thank you, ma'am. Good job. Some eggs next door, too. Bye. <laughs> Bye bye. See you later. Y'all like it? Nice and clean. See what you got in here. One. That egg's almost white. What do you have? Are you nice? Keep tail. Well, there's two. What else you got? Hi. You're sweet. Anything else? Two more. Good job. That's a pretty chicken. Let's keep going. This is Solo. She has one wing. One wing turkey. A raccoon got to their box. When they were little turkeys, um, and pulled her wing. Look at how many's in here. My goodness, they love it when you clean because they can get to the fresh, cool dirt underneath. That's what they're always digging down for anyway. Okay, lots of y'all in here. Is there any eggs in the boxes at all? Like it? Look at the pretty rooster over there. He is so pretty. Let's see if we can see his toe. Oh, hang on. He ain't going to let me get to him. Hey, buddy. Look at that foot. Woo, that is a crooked toe right there. <laughs> He's so pretty, though. He just has one toe that takes a left turn. <laughs> Look at all kinds of chickens over here.
Hey there. I'm in the kitchen now this evening and this is the last thing that I'll do for the day, but I wanted to show you exactly what I was gonna do for dinner tonight. And that is gonna be some of these ginger garlic meatballs. We made these ginger garlic meatballs together in one of the meal prep videos that I did recently. So I'll try to put it like up here or here, wherever they go. Definitely I'll link it in the description box at least for the recipe. But I'm gonna make these tonight. I have a bag of um, fried rice that is like a store-bought fried rice with chicken in it, I think. So I'm gonna use that for the rice instead of making white rice. Yeah, if I'm gonna cook up the meatballs and make a sweet and sour sauce to go on the meatballs as well. I'm just, they're frozen solid right now. So I turned the oven on to 400. I'm gonna get them in to bake for a few minutes and then we'll start on them. 